There is some huge news coming from SeaWorld San Diego. We have recently learned that the park owes $12.2 million in back rent stemming from the COVID shutdown. The park filed papers a couple of days before Monday, October 23's deadline for a response to the city's lawsuit. This moved the case from the San Diego Superior Court to federal court. Most of this news broke in early September, however it is the motion to move the case to federal court that really caught our attention. The lawsuit filed by the city states that SeaWorld failed to pay its minimum annual rent during the pandemic. The park has said that it was not required to make minimum rent payments during the forced shutdown, however the city has insisted that the rent could be postponed but must eventually be paid. The park leases its Mission Bay site from the city and was given the opportunity to have a 24-month repayment plan like what was offered to all city tenants. Reports from the city treasurer state that the park has $8.9 million in unpaid rent from January 1, 2019 to April 30, 2022. The rest of the $12.2 million has accumulated from interest and late fees. In August, the city gave SeaWorld a final deadline or face a lawsuit for breach of conduct. The city filed the lawsuit on September 7, with the park filing a notice on October 19, a couple of days before the deadline. SeaWorld said the move to transfer the case from the state court was allowed because the defendant and prosecutor are from different states. The park's parent company, SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment, is based in Orlando, Florida, while the prosecutor is based in San Diego. There has been no trial date set, however there is a date for a case management session to allow both parties to talk with the judge about how they want the legal matter handled. This will be on April 12, 2024. I think this definitely could be a problem for the SeaWorld chain. This is the second time we have seen SeaWorld get behind on payments. The first was in 2020 when SeaWorld owed $2 million for Icebreaker, $3.5 million for Iron Gwazi, and two other smaller payments totaling about $1.5 million. But the bigger problem here could be that SeaWorld still continues to add massive additions every year even with their debt problems. Since 2019, the chain has added two massive B&Ms, a massive RMC, multiple family coasters, a large-scale GCI, and a massive Intamin multi-launch coaster. And with two more B&Ms on the way in 2024, when will their massive spending stop? If the park is truly in financial trouble, how can they add so many additions in such a short amount of time? $12.2 million is no small amount. They have to pay off that debt and make all their payments on future additions. I really don't know what to think of this. On one hand, it looks like SeaWorld is doing great financially with all their giant additions, but on the other hand, they are having lots of debt problems and it seems to be they are plummeting downhill on them. I know this was a shorter video, but I just wanted to put this out here. What do you think of the SeaWorld financial situation? Let us know in the comments down below. And since you made it this far, please consider giving the video a like or subscribing. Thank you for watching.